Greetings, friends. So I wanted to do a little video about my friend, Monty Simpson. Monty is a street preacher. Uh, he's kind of a specialist to what he does. He's been doing it a long time, actually. Um, but regardless of what you think about street preachers, um, God uses it. And um, there's a place for it. In fact, God will use anything. Uh, if He's just waiting on us to go do something, but he will use anything, really will. So, Monty and I went to New Orleans yesterday, right before a Mardi Gras parade, and um, I just went to kind of help him out, pass out tracks, pray for some people, whatever might come up. And uh, so you'll see a little bit of that on the video, but it's just a little bit. Uh, a few of the other things that happened was, we got to pray for a lady that had arthritis in her knee with severe pain. We prayed for her a couple of times and her pain completely vanished and she could do a squat all the way down to the concrete. It was pretty amazing. Um, we got to pray for another lady that had back pain from some kind of lower back injury. And uh, a couple of prayers, all of her pain completely vanished. Pretty amazing. She was, she was astonished. Uh, there was another young, uh, couple of young ladies who were listening to Monty on the corner pretty intently. And I walked over there and talked to them. And um, I think it was a lesbian couple. I don't know. Doesn't matter. But they were actually asking questions about the gospel. And I got to share the gospel with them. Uh, got to give them some gospel tracts. And um, they went on their way, you know. So who knows what will happen with them. But I know this. The Bible says some water and some plant, but God gives the increase. But how is God going to give the increase if we don't plant or water? So God is just waiting on us to go. And, um, you know, there were people down there from all over the world. We met people from Jamaica, Haiti, California, Texas, North Carolina, and who knows where else. There were just people there from everywhere, you know. And um, God's just waiting on us to go. God asked Isaiah, who will go for me? And Isaiah said, here I am, send me. So God is saying that to us in this generation. He's saying to us right now, who will go for me? And he's waiting on us to go. So hope this video inspires you at some level. And if you like what Monty's doing, uh, friend him off of my Facebook page and get in contact with him. Okay? Thank you, and I hope you enjoy this video. Video, okay. All right, this is here with Brother Monty this morning. We're fixing to head to New Orleans somewhere. I don't know where, but we're going out on the where streets. The centers are. Going out on the streets, we're gonna. Monty's gonna preach, and we're gonna be just whatever, giving out tracks and praying for people, and we're just gonna see what happens. But uh, I've been out with Monty several years ago, a long time ago, but this is our first time out in several years but Monty's got some new stuff going on here about uh, like a little portable preaching unit and so I'm gonna let him just show you what he's done here he's built some some stuff to take out so what do we got going on here Monty what is this well this is a large <laughs> pulpit much larger than what I anticipated in the beginning but uh, I wanted to be able to use it it, it holds all my equipment it has a battery inverter I'll have my PA system which is right there have that all mounted in here we're getting ready to mount it uh, I have my so you take this you take this out on the street yeah we're fixing to this will be the first time okay but uh got my pulpit here not my first time to preach but my first time to use to that take my pulpit uh, this pulpit but anyway I got my speaker there it'll fit right in back here down here, it just fits right in there. Okay. I'll stuff it full of whatever other stuff we need. It'll have the microphone, everything. All I got to do is pull it out of the truck, flip it on, hook the battery up, flip it on, and be preaching. I don't have to set up a whole bunch of, you know, stuff. Then, uh, over there? we're going to show a picture too, but we have this picture here that we'll mount on the front. Show how that goes on there. And, uh, well, it just goes on them bolts. But Let's see what it looks like real quick. Put it on there. Well, it, can't just, it, just, it doesn't just go on yet because the holes are not that big. You have to kind of tap them on, so it's just going to go in front of it. Okay. Like that. So that's what everybody's going to see. And then it has wing nuts so you can pull it off. And uh, bring the tools and the right. them. So 
Nice. This is my little camper God blessed me with that I'm going to be staying in when I do some preaching different places. Okay. And, uh, painted it up. I'm still cool. Gonna finish painting it. Okay, we're fixing to pack up and head out. Yeah. To be continued. Driving up and down the street, bro. <laughs> I'd rather get parked. Somewhere. Well, I would too, but I'm just saying we can. I used to do it the first time I came down here with my van. I'd go all the way down to now. Here we are, we made it. We're on Canal Street. Monty's fixing to crank up. We'll see what happens. Yeah, God. Oh, hallelujah. He didn't say that to the other thief. He said it only to the one who said, Jesus, remember me. The other one cursed God till his very death. Just like some of you, you'll curse God to your very death, but it will only be to your own destruction. What if you, like the repentant thief, will say, Jesus, Jesus, I can't take it no more, Jesus. The wages of sin has destroyed my life. You see, sin has a way. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. Not just physical death. That's included. But spiritual death. You see, every, every blessing, whether you want to admit it or not, every blessing, on this earth is because of the Father. The air that we breathe, the sun that shines. No man put that here. The rain that falls and waters the crop. Oh, preacher, there's no God, really? God says in the book of Psalms, the fool has said in his heart, there's no God. Don't be foolish. Don't, don't prove God right. Don't prove it right by continuing to believe the lie of an atheist. The, the family, the family of God, out of the family of the devil, two families on earth, the family of God, the family of the devil. You're either a part of one of them. 
But you don't have to stay a child of the devil. If you curse, you're a child of the devil. If you lie, you're a child of the devil. If you cheat, you're a child of the devil. All of us were born children of the devil because of the fall. Oh, but the good news is, God loved you anyway. God redeemed man, bought back what the devil stole, and you can come to Jesus and be adopted into his family. Oh, hallelujah. I didn't say a church building. I didn't say a religion. See, Christianity's not a religion. It's a relationship. You gotta come into relationship with God. That means at the midnight hour, He'll be there. If you'll be there for Him, He'll be there for you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. But you gotta come to Him. He's not there until you come to Him. He's waiting. If you wanna live for the devil and die and go to hell, He's not gonna stop you. He gave you the choice. He don't want rob robots. He wants people that love Him. He wants people that believe Him. He wants people that accept Him. But He's got plenty of angels. He doesn't need us. He wants us. See, there's a difference. If a man needs a wife, there's going to be problems. But if a man wants a wife, or a woman wants a husband, there's going to be a difference in the relationship. Because two people come together wanting to be with each other. So it is with you and I in Christ. All of us need God, but not all of us want God. And I hope today that you'll make an about face and you'll change your mind about God. I hope today that somehow we've said something. Maybe this picture touched you. Maybe something was said in a... I'd be dead. And God saved his soul standing right here. He surrendered his life to the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. But that's just one of many. One of many things I've seen the Lord do right here. I've even gone to court because they didn't like it because I preach here. But I won. I won. Because I have a right. Amen. And I have a calling on my life. And I'm not ashamed like some might be. Oh, I would never go out there and preach during Mardi Gras. I would never go out there and say, well, you're not a witness for Jesus, then." worried about standing up for Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. See, I got angels. I got angels watching over me. Can you say that today? When you walk down these streets, I got angels from God. Psalm 91 says, he has given his angels charge over me. Say, well, is that for everybody? No. It's only for those that believe on Jesus. Well, that sounds selfish. It's not. It's a choice. See, if you're a born-again believer, you no longer have the demons that were following you before because they're trying to destroy you, trying to use you, trying to make you go the way of Satan. But now you have the angels of God. You have the Spirit of the living God as well. But the unbeliever is not so. You have no protection. God's not watching over you until you start looking toward Him. Some preacher down at an altar praying a prayer. Amen. It was me and the Lord. Me and the Spirit of the Lord. That's what you need. You need a relationship with you and the Lord. You need to start talking to Jesus. You need to start believing in the Father. Jesus said, when you pray, pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Do you treat God like His name is hallowed? Or do you just think it's another curse word? God is holy. God is hallowed. 
my lord, some some people I see them on TV. They talk back to the judge. I'm talking about an earthly judge. They talk back. They have no respect. They go in there. They argue with a judge. The judge says, "Okay, be quiet. I'm gonna give you one more chance." They just keep on arguing. That's the spirit of rebellion. That's rebellion against authority. That's the problem with our country today. Rebellion. But when you treat God in that same way, there's a greater judge. There's a greater judge than the judge in the courthouse. There's a greater judge, there's a greater king than the President of the United States. There's a greater one that you will answer to. Oh, my friend. Oh, hallelujah. Whatever it costs, whatever it costs, you better live for Jesus. You better make an about face. You better start living for Jesus. We're in the last days. Jesus is coming soon. We're, we're in the days that were prophesied in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Never before has a generation had the prophecies come to pass like our generation. But yet they'll tell you there's no God. If there's no God, then you have no air to breathe. God could not, this earth would not exist. If it took billions of years for that tree to form, then it would never come out beautiful like that. If it took billions of years for the sun to form, then you would have no light of day. If it took billions of years for your eyeballs to conform or to form like evolution tries to teach, then you would be having one eye over here, one eye over there. You'd look pretty weird.